Hey everyone, Paul the Sound Guy, product specialist for sure, and we're going to be going into the studio today to show you some ways to mic your drum kit. Now you may be asking yourself, there are tons of drum miking videos out there, why make another one? And the answer is, <laughs> why not? <laughs> we're going to have some fun, use some industry standard setups, but we're going to throw in a few quirks for getting some unique sounds. Let's get to it. The kick drum can have different configurations depending on how the drum is set up. If it has a hole in the front head, you can simply place a mic in the hole. If you're using two mics, one mic can go inside and another one out. If the kick doesn't have a hole, you can place the mic off access to the beater or on access depending on the sound you're going for. This kick has a hole in the front, so we'll start by placing the Beta 91 inside the kick drum assuming there is some padding inside. If not, you'll want to drop a blanket or something for the mic to rest on and to help dampen the sound. You can also substitute this mic with a small diaphragm condenser as well. Now we'll position the Beta 52 in the hole of the kick drum. If you're only using this outer mic, you may want to angle it slightly toward the beater for an improved attack. Depending on what sound you're looking for will depend on where in the hole or how far in or out you want to push the mic. I always recommend putting on some headphones, listening to the mic and the instrument in order to find the right position for you. Let's listen to the Beta 91 and the Beta 52 by themselves and then together as a combo. The snare can be mic'd in several ways from top only, top and bottom, two on the top, or even a side mic. If you mic with more than one, it's usually a top and a bottom. For this, we'll place an SM57 on the top and another SM57 on the bottom. Keep in mind that the snare will be out of polarity with these two mics, so you'll want to reverse the polarity of the bottom mic by engaging the polarity switch, sometimes labeled phase, otherwise the snare will sound hollow. The top mic captures the body and snap of the snare, while the bottom mic gives you more sizzle. Let's hear the SM57 on the top and the bottom separately and then together. Now I've seen all kinds of crazy setups for miking a hi-hat. Some people go 90 degrees to the cymbal, some angle it with the mic pointing toward the kit, and others angle it pointing away from the kit. However you choose to set it up, make sure it sounds good in conjunction with the snare and the overheads. Let's take a listen to the SM81 on the hat by itself. With tom miking, it's all about placement to capture the best sound while avoiding unintentional stick hits and lower place cymbals. We can position the mic closer or further away depending on the sound you want to capture. I like to start by placing my hand over the front of the mic, have the drummer or tech strike the head, and move the mic into position where the air off the tom has the most impact on the back of my fingers, and then I lock it into place. This is just a good starting position, and then we can move the mic around as we see fit. Let's hear the Beta 98 on the rack and the floor tom. When we mic up the drum overheads, there are a couple of setups you want to consider. Are you miking the cymbals or miking the drum kit? This can change where and how high you position the mics. Keep the mics lower if you want more of the cymbals or higher if you want more of the drum kit. Since it's a stereo setup, you also want to consider what type of stereo technique you want to use. We'll review a couple of different options. The first is the space pair. This is probably the most common. We take a cardioid microphone, either small diaphragm condenser or a large diaphragm condenser, and place them evenly over the drum kit. Simple enough. Another option is the XY configuration. With the XY, you place two small diaphragm condensers at a 90 degree angle with overlapping capsules that can go either in front of or behind and over the kit. This provides you with a nice stereo image that can also fold back to mono if needed. 
The last option is my favorite, and that's the Glenn Johns method. Here we place a mic near the floor tom ride symbol and measure the distance from the capsule to the middle of the snare. Then we place a second mic equidistant above the snare. This can create a really wide stereo image when panned apart with a nice solid snare sound in the center. Let's hear the KSM-32s as our space pair. Now let's hear the KSM-137s with our Shure stereo bar in XY. Lastly, let's hear the KSM-141s in the Glenn John setup. If you have a nice sounding room, some well-placed room mics can add a lot to the sound. Sometimes this can be a mono or stereo or both. Typically for a stereo setup, we'll use a space pair of large diaphragm condensers in Omni to really capture the sound of the room. These are positioned further away from the kit and higher than our overheads. Another setup is called the Bloom Line setup, which incorporates two ribbon microphones or two large diaphragm condensers in bi-directional or figure eight pattern. We position the mics lower to the floor and a few feet back from the kit so the diaphragms are aligned but facing 90 degrees to each other. Aim them so the drums are between the mic pickup patterns. The front patterns pick up the drums directly and the rear pattern picks up the room. Let's hear the KSM-353 ribbon microphones in our Bloom Line setup. Now let's hear the KSM-44As in Omni as our space pair. Here's a trick for capturing what we call a crush mic. If you've set up a mic like the SM57 for the drummer's talkback, you can record and use this in the mix as well. Typically, we squash this input pretty hard with a compressor to give us a dirty mono sound that we can blend in with our other mics. One last tip is to ensure you get a great sound, and that's checking for polarity with your close mics and overheads. If they are out of polarity, it'll rob you of your low end and appear hollow sounding. You can easily do this by checking your closed mics against the overheads, flipping the polarity of the closed mics to see which setting has the best sound. Now that we have everything set up, let's take a listen. That's it for drum miking techniques. I hope you learned something new and useful to inspire your own drum sounds. As always, position the microphones, put on some headphones, listen to your studio monitors, move the mic around, find the best position for your drum setup and your mic selection. Thanks for watching and stay creative.